welcome everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. This is the Teach Me on Preparing for Parents' Evening as an ECT. So welcome, we are very happy that you're here. Um, in this Teach Meet today, we will be covering everything that you need to know about Parents' Evening. So we'll be talking about preparing for Parents' Evening, what to do during Parents' Evening, what questions you might be asked by parents and guardians during Parents' Evening and how you could answer them, and also what you can do after parents evening as well so we expect this session to last around 40 minutes i will be i will be presenting alongside my colleague ashley and there will be time at the end for any questions if anything comes up um, as emily mentioned the um, reflections pdf document will be dropped into the chat multiple times throughout the session and that has a lot of handy links to resources, blogs, podcasts, anything that you really need, it will be in that reflections document. And we might ask for your thoughts at certain points. So feel free to type a response in the chat if you would like to answer and rather not speak on camera. So I'm just going to now introduce myself. So my name is Matisha and I was a teacher for seven years before I joined Twinkle. Throughout my time in school I taught throughout Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 and I spent three years, my first three years of teaching actually in year six and I also have some experience in supply teaching as well. So I am part of the trainee teachers and ECTs team here at Twinkle where I create videos for our YouTube channel and I support trainee teachers and ECTs on our Facebook groups and in CPD sessions just like this one. So our goal in our team is to provide you with all the support, advice and guidance that you need to make a flying start into your career in teaching. And I'm now going to pass over to Ashley to introduce herself. Hello everyone, um, my name is Ashley, as Matisha said. Um, I'm also a former primary school teacher. I've taught predominantly in year four and year five, but I've also worked as a supply teacher and I've worked as a one-to-one -one learning support assistant. Um, so I've kind of done a little bit of everything in primary schools. So I now work alongside Matisha and the rest of my colleagues in the trainee teachers and ECT team here at Twinkle. So my main priorities are I co-host a podcast with my colleague Simeon. I lead the TikTok channel um, for our team and I create all of the new resources that are um, there specifically for trainees and ECTs. And the best part of my job and this role is helping you feel confident and ready when you walk through those classroom doors every day. So if you do have any questions, please put them in the chat so we can answer them. That's what we're here for. Right. Thank you, Ash. Right, so let's get started. So this session is all about parents' evening. So if you've got your first parents' evening coming up, naturally you will probably be feeling a little bit nervous that's completely normal just to let you know some parents may come and they may surprise you some will be supportive and some might actually make you feel a little bit challenged so what we're going to do in this session is kind of refer to all possible scenarios of what could happen and how you can prepare yourself for those things so a couple of things that you probably are probably going through your mind right now is that you need to make sure your classroom is presentable and prepare for each meeting for every single parent and guardian for the for every child in your class. So this is all on top of your normal workload. So it's completely normal to feel very overwhelmed right now. So what we're going to be doing is talking about kind of the things that you might be worried about. OK, so you might be worried about a parent complaining. You might be worried about it being quite challenging or you might be worried about them confronting you with something so they may they may come across negative about their child in the school or might seem a little bit hostile too so what this session will do it will guide you on parents evening and help you prepare for those possible scenarios you'll also get some tips on what to do during and after your meetings and as a result we're hoping after this meeting you'll feel more equipped to tackle any questions and also feel more confident too in dealing with situations like I just mentioned. So parents evening doesn't have to feel so intimidating, even though it does, but it doesn't have to be. So hopefully you'll enjoy spending time with your pupils, parents and guardians and also get important feedback as well, which can in turn help you as a teacher. It can also, um, it can also easily be part of a of a start of a positive working relationship with you and the parent and even when challenging issues can be resolved with good communication so this is these are all things that we're going to be talking about today 
So let's first of all start with how you can prepare for parents' evening. So probably in the position that you are now thinking about parents' evening, maybe a little bit worried about it. So let's see what we can do to help you prepare for it. So you, the main thing is, is that as a teacher, you want to feel in control of the meeting. You are leading this meeting as the teacher. So in order to do that, preparation is key. And I'm going to give you some tips now to help you feel ready for the big day that is parents' evening. So what you can do is that you can contact some parents in advance. So if you have a child in your class that is potentially maybe struggling, maybe academically or maybe socially with friends in the playground, that sort of thing, you should contact the parent in, in advance of the meeting. You shouldn't really break this news at parents' evening. Instead, make sure you contact them beforehand and give this information some time to settle in. And then you can use the meeting to talk about what actions you might be able to take next. So any news that you give parents at parents' evening shouldn't be new news, if that makes sense. It should be something that they already know about. Also, another idea could be is that you could come with notes. So you might find it helpful to have some typed notes in a document for each child. That can be really helpful for you just to remember what you, um, what you need to say to the parent. And also, you can have your laptop on the desk as well for parents to look at. If you're feeling nervous, then this can actually take away um, attention from you and from the notes. And also you can look at the notes as well and print off a copy for the parents for them to take home. So good idea to have notes for you and for the parents. Getting a timer nearby can be really, really important and it can be really useful to make sure that each of your sessions stay on time so that you're not overrunning and then the next meeting won't overrun and, and so on. Parents evenings can be quite a long time um, and it can be a bit of a late night for you. So reducing that and making sure that you're not staying lo longer than needed is really, really important. Um, some schools do it in different ways. Some schools like to have all of the teachers in the hall with a desk and they'll have a big timer on the board in the hall. Some schools, which is more common, like you to be in your classroom. So how you want to work that is up to you. It can feel a little bit strange at first by timing a parent but if you just remind them it's there for their own good and every other parent to make sure that no one's waiting um, because if they've got multiple children they don't want to be missing meetings as well so just explaining that most parents are completely fine with that the next one is to definitely bring snacks and keep hydrated as silly as it sounds parents evening can be a very um it is a time where you just go from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing and you can forget to eat and you can forget to drink and as much as it's tempting to make sure that you don't need to go to the toilet or anything like that you need to make sure that you're hydrating you're going to be talking for a long time you want to save your voice and also if you're anything like me if I have not eaten for a while I get brain fog and I can't focus so it's best to make sure that you're at your peak so that you can have these meetings um, and they go the best way that they possibly can do. The next one, which is really quite important to think about, is your layout. So ignore the fact of some schools, you know, might be in the hall. Um, if you're in a school where they like you in your classroom, you really need to be thinking about how you're wanting to set up for these meetings. So maybe you want a desk between you and the parents, so you're sitting opposite each other, if that's how you feel comfortable. You might like to sit right next to the parent, if that makes you feel comfortable. If you're wanting a laptop out, Where's that going to be positioned? Can everyone see it? Do you want everyone to see it or is it just for you? So having that in the back of your mind. Um, very, very important. Do you have a comfortable chair? If you're going to be sat in the same position for a few hours that night, if you're on just the children's chair, it might get quite sore and uncomfortable. So if you've got a one of your comfy desk chairs, you know, can that fit where you want to go? Um, and another one that's quite often overlooked but quite important and can make your meetings go quite smoothly is if you are expecting the parents to bring the children with them or if they've got younger siblings or anything like that maybe having a little table off to one side that's set up with some books or some activities or some things like colouring that the children can be doing it just means that you're not going to be interrupted and the parents aren't going to be interrupted by their, their child asking them for x y and z constantly throughout the meeting you want to make sure that everyone can concentrate and take in all of the information so there's a few things for you to consider there 
you also want to be thinking about the structure. So as much as you want to be flexible and you want to allow these meetings to go where they need to go, you do want to be having a little bit of a skeleton structure first, and then you can be flexible and move around that. So you're wanting that so that you can spend time getting all of your information across but also having enough time to really consider and listen to the parents concerns or opinions or thoughts and you want to make sure that parent understands and acknowledges that you are taking the time for them because it does go such a long way so we've got a framework that you can use if you feel comfortable um, and it might help you with the first couple of parents evenings that you go through and then once you become more experienced you might have your own way that you want to go and you should wing it a little bit and you feel confident doing that but firstly we would always say to start with a general summary of the child so what are they like in your classroom around the school are they kind are they helpful um, do they get involved in the activities are they a little bit reserved do they put their hand up quite a lot are they resilient? Just giving them a general summary of their child. And also at this point, don't be surprised if the parent says something like, oh, that's not how they are at home, because that happens a lot. You may see one side of the child at school and the parents might see a completely different side. So that's that's absolutely fine. Number two, I would talk about the strengths and the progress. And at this point, we always like to have a few examples ready so for example if you're teaching your year two teacher and you've got the child that did fantastic with halvings with fractions and they've struggled previously and they've worked really hard and they've now secured that knowledge and you're really proud of them that would be a fantastic example to be telling the parent about if they've been, you know great at sport and they've had a sporting achievement as well it's fantastic just to give them those primary examples of their child and it shows your knowledge of the child and it's just lovely for a parent to know that their child's teacher knows them inside out and it'd be fantastic for them to to discuss all of the positives the next is talking about areas of developments or targets and again i would be having an example and you want to be having an example for all of the children in the class not just the ones that you know you might want to be talking to parents about behavioral issues or if they if they're a little bit disruptive you want to be having targets for learning for all of the children now those might be academic it might be personal and social it's whatever you think um are the the sort of most important ones and talking to the parent about those gently and kindly um, as you don't want to just be um, listing a whole list of um, negatives that you have that's that's not going to be a great um, way of going about it once you've done those you then want to be talking about the actions that need to take place to overcome those areas um, for development. So if, for example, it is that the child um, shouts out constantly, you might want to be talking um, to the parent about what actions you're going to be taking to stop that. So it might be reminders. It might be that they um, you know, have to put their, if they put their hand up, you'll always pick them up something that you and the parent come up with together that you think would work and then once you've made those targets and do you've put those actions down you've made a, a note of them you want to be booking in a follow-up meeting with a parent to discuss how they are going on um, obviously this isn't going to be for every single child in the class you're not going to be booking to see the, the parent in a formal meeting for everything but if you think it's important and useful then i would be doing that for the for a few of the children most of them it'll just be oh yeah we'll, we'll have a chat on the door next week or something like that but you just want to make sure that the parent knows that whatever you're wanting to do with their child that you'll you'll be catching up with them and, and giving them a bit of a chat to see how it's going and then the next one is to leave a bit of a space in your notes for feedback from parents. So if they've got any concerns, if they've got anything that um, they want you to try or they're going to try at home that um, you'd like to keep a, a note of so that you can ask them. It's anything like that. You just want to making sure that you're writing down in the notes because 
parents evening you have a lot of information that you're giving and a lot of information that you're receiving so you want to make sure that you're not going to forget them so writing them down somewhere whether that is handwrite it handwritten or if that is on a laptop however that works best for you just make sure that you're you're keeping on top of your notes so you don't forget anything okay thanks ash so another few bits of advice of what to do during parents evening so keep an eye on the time so remember to keep to your time slots it's easy to focus on what you're saying and then forget when the meeting actually started and remember if you're running over you can always pop in a follow-up meeting with the parent and meet them at another time um, also try to get comfortable so remember to eat drink and take comfort breaks it is a very long evening especially after a long day of teaching try to sit in a comfortable position comfortable position and wear clothes that are comfortable yet smart and you also need to be calm and relaxed to focus on your attention in the meeting too try to learn from the experts as well so the best thing is is that you're meeting the parents or, um, or guardians of the child that you are teaching so the best person to actually speak to about that child is their parent or guardian, they know them best. You can learn from the parents. And this means you can also personalize your lessons for everyone in your class, because you might get those kind of insights you might not have had before. So another thing is also to write down any follow-up work. So if you need to follow up with a parent at a later date, then write this down in your diary. And this, and this is good. So it reminds you to contact them and it also reassures the parent as well if they're seeing that you're actually doing it, that you've written it down. Um, remember as well that you're the classroom expert, but that doesn't mean that you need to have all the answers for every single question they might ask you on the spot there and then. So if you're asked anything challenging or maybe something that you're not really sure of, it's absolutely fine to say that you need to take um, you need um, some time to figure out the answer for that or you need to take a deeper look at it first. That's absolutely fine. A good idea too is to try and make this meeting with the parent a collaboration. So it's not a meeting just for you to give out loads of information um, about the child or about your about the school, that sort of thing. And it also isn't a space for the parents to just voice their opinion. It's in a cl collaboration about the child. It's a time where you can communicate together, and it needs to be it needs to be where you can work together and work with the child's interests at heart. Another thing to remember, and this is something that I used to forget as well, is that parents are actually a little bit nervous to meet you. You're not just nervous to meet the parents. So if anything happens in these parents' evening meetings, for example, any anger from parents or that sort of thing, it could just be a symptom of their anxiety for the evening. So maybe they haven't had a parents' evening before. Maybe this is their first one. So if they are hostile, you can ask them about the problem and guide them to a solution. And it might give them a sense of control as well and also ease their worries by you saying that, you know what, I'm here to help you, help your child. What can I do to help and make this um, situation a bit better for you all? And remember, the more relaxed that you are the more relaxed the parents are likely to be too um another thing that i wanted to mention this is very important so if you feel that you need help in the parents evenings meetings or if you're concerned about maybe a parent or guardian's behavior remember you can leave the room you need to put yourself first you can also ask a senior leader to come in and finish the meeting if you need help as well if you are worried about a particular parent in advance of the meeting, you can also ask a senior leader to sit in on the meeting and you can, or you can do it in a more central location rather than in your classroom. You can ask for it to be done in the library or somewhere like that where there may be other people around. Um, another bit of advice um, is to have everything that you need to hand. The last thing you want to do is be shuffling around trying to find data from the beginning of the year or something like that so if you can then maybe have a folder with everything that you may need for parents evening i used to particularly have a parents evening folder that would have all of my bits and pieces in there remember to keep other children's results confidential and out of reach so make sure the parents can't actually see another child's data um, and anything that you need that you're that you might want the parents to take home with them for example, a list of websites, it could be the age-related expectations, or maybe a copy of the meeting notes. I often used to um, hand out the spelling list for that particular um, key, key stage, remember year three, year four, year five, year six, or key stage one. Um, any of that kind of stuff, just keep it handy so you can just hand it to the parent as they leave or when they walk in as well. Or another tip is if they're waiting outside and you're running over, then you can hand it to them, I'll have a look at this and then for a few minutes because that can buy you some time as well. 
Okay, so the next section that we wanted to talk to you about, um, which I think was something that I was always the most anxious about, is what am I going to be asked during this parents' evening? If you've never done one before, um, that unknown can be quite overwhelming. So we wanted to go through a few common questions that you might be asked and then let you know how to prepare for them. So the first one, which is very common, is how can I help my child further? Um, so this one I'm hoping is going to be rather easy for you and it's something that you can easily prepare beforehand. So yeah, you just want to be talking about what things the parents can be doing at home and how that will help so like Matisha was saying with the spelling list it might be a fantastic way for the parent to talk uh, to do those nice and comfortably at home it might be times tables and you can suggest some car car games that they can be doing with their child daily reading is also something that's really going to be useful um, and you can suggest some books maybe that they can be reading with their child, just little things that they can be helping their child with. So that one we're hoping will be quite an easy one for you to prepare for. The next one is my child doesn't seem happy at school, what can you do to help? This one we're hoping that if this is going to pop up we're hoping that you will have been aware of it before. Like we were saying Parents' evening shouldn't be a time for brand new information. So hopefully you would notice if a child seemed unhappy or that the parent would have let you know that their child was unhappy before this meeting or the child would have let you know. Unless it was something that's happened immediately before the meeting or you know in that um, previous week and they hadn't been able to catch you, hopefully you should know this and you would have been able to have prepared or, or thought of some actions in place. If it is brand new information and you've never heard about it before and it's just popped up in this meeting, then please don't be afraid to just ask for clarification. So try to understand completely what the issue is, what's making them upset, what aren't they enjoying, is it a general they seem quite down at the moment, are they down at home and at school, is there something going on, is there something family related, is it a friendship, what is it that's getting them down and then once you've figured that out that is the time when you're looking at um, either saying we can get a follow-up meeting for this, give me some time, let me try and figure it out and we'll meet again in say a week or so or in a couple of days once I've had a thought or if you can already think on the spot of what, what might help, you can talk to that parent, you can come up with a few ideas together, you can write a, down the notes for those ideas and then you can say, right, we're going to try these this week, I'll let you know on Friday how it's going or you know, we'll catch up with the child or we'll sit down together. So it's just making sure that you are giving them the space to voice their concerns, you're listening to what the concern is and then you're either taking the time to go away and think about it or you're coming up with an action plan sort of then and there in collaboration with the parent. Hopefully it isn't brand new information. Um, another question that you could be asked by the parent is, is my child where they should be academically? So if you get a question like this or related to this, you could talk about how the child has progressed since maybe like, you know, if your parents evening is coming up soon, you can say from September to here, they've got really better in this, or they've got, you know, they've really improved in this area, in this topic in maths. And you can also talk about what areas they can work on next. So for example, they could say, you know what, they, your child is doing really well in column addition. They've, they weren't able to do it in September, but now when we've revisited it, they're able to do it. I think now they should be able to work on word problems involving column addition. You can do, you can say something along the lines of that. Um, you might also want to mention the age related expectations and explain how the child can progress through support through school and at home. So you might want to give them some advice and tips on what they can do at home with their child to make sure that they can, they're meeting age related expectations as well. Um, a common question that always seems to come up is, how can I get my child to read more at home? Like I used to get that question so many, so many times. Most parents used to ask me that. And it was it's quite strange because sometimes we'd have reading sessions in, in class, but they'd say, that's strange because my child doesn't read at home at all, or might be the op complete opposite, to be honest. So how you answer this question is going to be different for every child based on their reading ability. So a general approach is to make reading a positive bonding experience rather than something that is something they just need to tick off the to-do list. So 
And advice you can give the parent in this case is choosing alternative books to read at home, which matches what the child is interested in. And also this, you can suggest um, maybe reading together kind of with the, with the parent or having like a, maybe a, a sibling or something that they read with at home that can encourage reading as well. So those are some advice if you get a question related to reading or where they should be academically. Okay, this one is a very, very common question and it's something that will, you'll probably be asked at multiple points throughout the year as it's a common sort of issue that, that children face in school. It's that my child is struggling with a friend at school and nothing is changing, what is the school going to do about it or something along those lines. So again, we're hoping that this is sort of a scenario that you've been aware of, you might have spoken to the children, it might be obvious that they've fallen out, it might be that the parent has come to you on the gate and, and let you know or let the TA know. So it really does depend on how much you know about the situation and what the situation is and the severity of the situation. So if the school is already aware, then you need to be talking about how the friendship seems to you um, because you might be seeing a completely different picture than what the parent sees. I know um, for, from my experience if you had parents that said my child can't play with that child and you tried to keep them away from each other they would always find a way to gravitate towards each other because they want to play together and even if they fall out they always do end up wanting to play together sometimes and it can be really difficult because you're stood there as the teacher going I can't always stop them because they, they gravitate they're like magnets so you would be talking to the parent about that because the parent might not be aware at all that that is happening try to mention the actions that are already being in uh, taken and suggest what can happen next so again it comes back to this idea of collaboration so it's you know maybe um, you could look at having a, um, a complete change of uh, seating plan, but make it subtle so it's not about child X can't play with child Y or sit next to child Y. It'll be just we're, we're mixing things up. And that means that that child can then, you know, interact with other children and they might not be, you know, um, have much to do with normally. The parent might have a suggestion of who they would like the child to sort of be encouraged to play with um, and you can take that on board and see if that works but it's having that open dialogue that open communication with the parent and seeing what you can do um, and what's been tried before what worked what didn't work and what we can try again next um, and again as always put in the date in the diary to discuss it with the parent after you've either taken a closer look at it and got your own information or you've tried a few things and you're going to see how that works because as, as fast as some children fall out with each other they're then best friends again the next week so sometimes it can seem really dramatic and that's not to take away from the importance of those conversations because as a child if you've fallen out with your friend that can be the most important thing going on in your life at the moment and we don't want to be taken away from that as adults but again next week they might be best friends again or they might have a new best friend um so it's just trying to balance that um listening to the parent and coming together to try and, and work out a solution that's how we would do that one okay so congratulations you finished parents evening now we're going to talk about what do you do after parents evening so after parents evening you are probably going to be full of adrenaline you just completed your first parents evening what an achievement honestly because it isn't easy and you're probably so tired you're probably so exhausted as well so here are some tips on what you can do afterwards to make the most of the evening after parents evening so the first thing i would advise that you do is just write down your notes okay it's probably the last thing you want to do but Honestly, please do it because try and write down any follow up tasks. So if you've said to a parent, oh, I'll send you this or, you know, I'll give you a call next week about this, then make sure you've just written that down before you leave school because you've just spent the last few hours being so focused. And once you switch off, it'll be hard to remember everything that you've actually told the parents in the meetings. And so it'll be really good to just write it down. And by writing things down, you can keep track of your to-do list. You won't forget something because the last thing you want to do is have promised the parent that you're going to send them something and then you just don't because then they will be chasing you for it. And you just don't need that extra pressure. And it also means that once you've written everything down in school, once you leave the school gates, you can literally forget about it, relax, relax, switch off and everything in your mind, you can just let go of it, of what's happened during the day. 
Another thing that you should also keep in mind is that if you had a challenging meeting or anything made you feel a little bit unsettled, speak to a senior leader or even the child's previous teacher, if it's, depending on what the situation is. Being able to offload and talk for everything will help you realize that the issue probably isn't you and most likely isn't you. And you'll be able to understand that some people handle their emotions differently. So for example, if you had a situation where a parent was acted a certain way towards you, if you go and speak to the previous class teacher, they might actually tell you, you know what, the parent was like that with me too. It's just the way that they are, or they've been like this with other teachers. It'll just make you feel a bit better that it wasn't anything personal. And also a very, if something was challenging, something made you feel not quite right, a little bit unsettled, that's what your senior leadership team are there for. And chances are that the senior leadership team have probably dealt with that parent before. So they can also advise you on the best way to approach the situation in the future. So two bits of advice there. Another bit that another th a couple of things I wanted to mention as well is that again, just um, leading on to the point I just mentioned is that if you have any, if there was any kind of negative things going on during the meetings or during parents evening, um, leave it with the people who brought it into the room. It doesn't have to stay with you. And remember, it wasn't your fault, whatever happened. And remember that you are doing the best that you possibly can. So you can't control the way that you can't control the day a parent might have had before they came to the meeting with you. And if they took it out on a bit, took it out on you a little bit, you can't control that. So try and leave whatever it is in school and try and relax and have a good evening. Once you get home, try and have a relaxing evening as much as you can. This could involve a nice bath, maybe a book, or maybe you're gonna just get a nice takeaway and enjoy, enjoy your evening. Allow yourself a night off work, then just don't do any work once you get home from parents' evening, and then you can start fresh for the next day. Okay, so we're coming to the end um, of this session. So we just wanted to be talking about the positives as well. As Matisha was saying, parents' evenings, they can sometimes be challenging and they can be a little bit tricky. Um, like I was saying earlier as well, they, they can be a little bit late. Um, so it's just a long day for you, but we want you to be thinking about all of the positive feedback that you had. Even if you have a couple of challenging parents or caregivers, the rest we hope would be positive. Um, and as this would be your first parents evening, we really want you to be taking a note of all of the positive things that have gone on. It's really, really important, especially as you can look back. And if you are having a day where you just feel like everything's getting um, a little bit on top of you, you can read those back and just see the positive things that happened and, and see how, how far you've come and, and what you've been able to achieve. So please make sure that you make a note of um, at least some of the positives. Like Matisha was saying before, please don't dwell on the negatives either. You can do whilst you're still there. If you, if you just need to get it down somewhere or talk to someone, offload it, like Matisha said. But once you've left work, do not think about it. Leave it at work. Don't bring it home. OK. And, you know, if you're thinking about it as well, you know, you, you might have been really nervous before these or you or you might have been nervous for a particular parent and it went surprisingly positive. That's amazing. And that's fantastic. And that should be something that you are proud of. So make sure that you're taking those little, little moments. And um, because when it comes around to the next parents evening, you'll know more, you'll know what to expect. And, you know, those things will carry you through. We also just wanted you to remember that, yes, it's daunting for you, but it is also daunting for the parents. It's very tough as a parent seeing your your child going off into school and not having that control and sort of, you know, being involved in their life as 100 percent as they were when they were younger. So it is quite difficult, especially if they if you are teaching the younger years, you know, the receptions, year ones, things like that. They are still their babies to the parents. So it can be really daunting for them to sort of go in and here academically and all of these different things it might be a completely different world to them so some of the meetings that you have might be tricky in other ways in the way of being able to get across the information but that's absolutely fine you're there to reassure the parents you're there to remind them that you're there to look after their child and that you care and that you take their concerns really seriously and it's also great for you to build that rapport with the parents these can be fantastic meetings yes you do need to be aware that some of them may be a little bit tricky, 
but they're also a fantastic opportunity and it's great for you to see the parents to see who you know the the home life that the child comes from for your classroom get to know them more establish relationships and uh, because you never know you might be teaching that child in a couple of years time you might follow them through the school you might have a lot to do with that parent they might have multiple children so it's just a great opportunity for you to sort of get on a on a nice one-to-one -one basis and to engage with them in a nice conversation so yeah they can be really really positive so good luck in your parents evening